Japan, last of the Axis powers, is left to fight on alone. But far away from Tokyo and the home islands, in the wild lands of occupied Manchuria, Japan has a secret weapon that could still seize victory from the jaws of defeat, a weapon capable of mass destruction never before seen in history. In the summer of 1945, Japan still occupied China, the Philippines, oil-rich Indonesia, Vietnam, and Korea. The bulk of her army and air force was still intact. Many in Asia saw her as a fighter against the return of white colonialism. Invading the Japanese home islands would cost hundreds of thousands of Allied dead. Japan was by no means defeated. And she still had an ace to play. Deep in Manchuria, Japan had developed a weapon of mass destruction no other nation yet possessed. A weapon she could use to attack the continental United States. This weapon had been created by Unit 731, the brainchild of soldier scientist General Shiro Ishii. Ishii was born in 1892 in the village of Kamo, east of Tokyo. The son of a rich feudal landowner, Ishii studied medicine and became interested in bacteriology. A fierce nationalist, he joined the army upon graduating. In April 1928, Ishii left on a two-year research trip, visiting 30 countries. In particular, he visited Germany to study the German army's use of poison gas during the First World War. More than likely, the introduction Shiro Ishii had to the secret of German military in this period came from contacts established by Karl Haushofer. On his return to Japan, Ishii convinced the Japanese Army High Command to begin a vast research program into a form of warfare even more terrible than the use of gas, germ warfare. Ishii was promoted to major and put in charge of the project. In size and scale, it would come to rival America's atomic bomb project. In 1931, the Japanese attacked and stole the vast country of Manchuria from China. Manchuria became the base for the operations of the Black Dragon Society. The Black Dragons financed much of industry and business in Manchuria with money laundered from their control of the Chinese opium trade. It was an ideal place to build a biological warfare facility. It was remote. It was controlled by an unholy alliance of the Black Dragons and the military. Secrecy was guaranteed. In 1938, work began on a vast research complex at Pingfan. It covered three square kilometers and took two years to build. So secret was the base that Japanese military planes were banned from flying over it. Here, Ishii set about building his biological weapons. The purpose of their experiments was to find out which particular diseases were the most virulent when it came to military use. They tried everything, but in fact, it transpired that good old-fashioned medieval bubonic plague was the worst possible disease. Just as well they were doing the experiments in remote Manchuria, because in the end, Ishii managed to stockpile enough bubonic plague to wipe out the entire human race. In bombing experiments, Ishii discovered that the fragile germ microbes perished because of strong air pressure or high temperature. What would make Shiro Ishii infamous was his solution to the delivery problem. Outside the human body, the bubonic plague germ dies, but it can be carried by the humble flea. One flea bite can transfer 24,000 plague microbes to a human being. But how do you deliver fleas?
Traditional bombing methods would surely kill the fleas in the blast. After years of intensive development, Ishii made a breakthrough. What if the casing of the bomb was made of clay? It would require less charge to explode the bomb, preserving the plague-carrying fleas to spread out with their cargo of death. In 1944, fully a year ahead of the first secret American atomic bomb test, Ishii developed his first germ bomb. Would it work? It is the world's first smart weapon. The bomb splits into two parts. A porcelain container is slowed by a parachute. This is filled with 30,000 plague-carrying fleas and oxygen to keep them alive. A radio beacon falls to Earth first, and on contact with the ground, detonates the germ bomb at the most lethally effective altitude. The tests proved that 80% of the bacteria carrying fleas actually su survived explosions. So Ishii now knew he had a weapon, and pretty soon he was turning out plague bombs, anthrax bombs, typhoid bombs. The thing he really had to do, though, was to prove that they killed people, and this is the most appalling part of his experiments beyond the technology. He experimented on live people to prove that the weapons worked. He used Chinese peasants, captured Chinese soldiers, and in particular, he used captured Allied airmen. In the autumn of 1941, Prime Minister Tojo personally awarded Shiro Ishii with a medal for successfully attacking the Chinese army with plague at the important communication center at Changte. Was this the deadly cargo the six-engine Fugaku would have carried across the Pacific to America? The Japanese expended considerable efforts on developing methods of attacking the continental United States by submarine, by aircraft, by balloon. There is no doubt they could have delivered Ishii's biological weapons had they chosen. And if they had done, then perhaps hundreds of thousands of Americans would have been killed. In the summer of 1945, Unit 731 embarks on its most dangerous operation yet. It is codenamed Cherry Blossoms at Night. The intention is to use the Japanese Navy's new I-400 submarine aircraft carriers. The target date is September 22nd, 1945. The plan is to bomb San Diego with bubonic plague bombs manufactured in Unit 731. The Japanese Army's project for using biological weapons against the United States was called Cherry Blossoms at Night. Unfortunately, the Japanese army didn't have a delivery system ready. The Fugaku bomber was not flying yet. The alternative method for delivering these weapons was to use the navies, the Japanese navies, secret aircraft carrier submarines, the giant IF-400s. The Japanese army and the Japanese navy then fell out over how to use these submarines, because the navy wanted to keep them in reserve to use for kamikaze attacks against attacking American aircraft carriers. Fortunately for San Diego, the Japanese Navy refused to endanger their I-400s in a last-ditch attack on the United States. Perhaps if the Japanese had publicly threatened to use their biological weapons against the United States, this would have deterred America from using its atomic weapons against Hiroshima and Nagasaki. By 1945, the Ping Fan Germ Warfare Factory was mass-producing bio-bombs. Japan was also working on nuclear weapons. But why did the Japanese never use their secret bio-weapons? After Hiroshima, senior Japanese military like Ishii realized the war was lost. Rather than use the biological weapons, Ishii decided that he could trade their secrets to the Americans for immunity. So Ishii and the staff at Unit 731 escaped prosecution after the war. In fact, Ishii himself became a senior advisor to the United States military on biological and chemical weapons. On April 7, 1987, the Japanese government at last admitted the existence of Unit 731. 
It also admitted that Shiro Ishii, godfather of Japan's biological warfare project, had been paid a retirement pension for his work. He died on the 9th of October, 1959, age 67. From my cold, dead hand.